you remember how you learned your first language? Did you learn that by reading reading a lot of books, or you learn it other ways? Okay, so today we are going to、uh, discuss what's the best,、uh, what's the better way to learn models to learn languages. And this paper、uh, proposed a very interesting methods. They learn the bird model to learn languages by not only reading text but also、uh, getting the image. Information, visual information. So we call this visually grounded bird,、uh, visually grounded、uh, supervision. But the different thing is, it's not only use the existing visually grounded corpor corpus. It actually create the new visually grounded corpus by very interesting methods they they propose. Amen. So what's special about this paper? This paper basically proposes a recognition、uh, process, which allows you to、uh, generate a large visually grounded language data. It's a way to attach languages to existing large language corpus, so that you can perform visually supervision、uh, language modeling on those data, data those data set. So that that's actually a pretty pretty、uh, innovative way to do things, which I'll cover later. And more importantly, if you train a model, if you train the visually、uh, supervised language models in this way, then you will have a very very significant improvement over the language model that is trained、uh, with pure text. And one thing that really interests me. Is, Uh, is that you basically on just use the very similar model architecture without changing too much thing, then you can、uh, have such improvement. The only thing that you change is the learning signal. In the training time, you you're not only learning with text, you on also learn with、uh, virtual grounded information. By the way, I make deep learning explained video every week. So if you would like to receive more relevant videos like this,、uh, don't forget to subscribe. And the your subscription is also my best encouragement to make more videos like this. So this work is done by only two authors, Hao and、uh, Mohit, and it's also accepted in EN NLP 2020. This paper, in fact, is inspired by human learnings. I mean, a lot of papers are inspired inspired by human learning process, but especially for lang language modeling,、uh, there's、uh, been a lot of criticisms、uh, to like Bird, GPT three, these kind of big language models, and the the criticism is like it's very hard to、uh, let a model learn the the meaning of words. Or the knowledge of the word、uh, from just the te pure text input. So this paper trying to adjust these problems by adding a visual、uh, visual cue in the learning signal.、Um, let's just、uh, take a look how human learn languages. Okay, so humans talk to each other. We we talk, and talking to other people help us understand. The、uh, world uh, and uh, languages uh, more, and we listen. We listen to other people. That's also a very important thing, especially for 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 the like baby toddlers. They they basically learn languages firstly by passive listening to their parents a lot, and we also read when when we uh, know how to read. Uh, we also write. Right, we also write things. So this is like four basic components of、uh, human learning languages. But definitely there are more.、Uh, the most important part, basically, is interaction with the world.、Um, for example, if you、uh, w imagine when you was a kid, then you ask your parents that you want a candy. Then you say the word candy. If you say the candy right, then they give you a candy, which is a good.、Uh, Kind of a reward. Then in the future you know how how to say 
candy more friendly. And when you see the candy, the image of candy, the object of candy, then you you will say that that's candy, right? And if you say it wrong, maybe you say it's computer, then you your parents maybe will just tell you that's not a computer, that's a candy. So give you a learning signal to 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 learn that. So it's, it's interaction uh, with the world. That's the most important thing. And one component, one one very important component of interaction with the world, I would say is visual pointing. There's a, there are some research paper, uh, papers doing like this kind of study. And it, it's just concluded that it's an essential step for kids to learn the meaning of words. And um, just uh, like most language models, like I previously mentioned, only take the text format input when uh, doing the pre-training. So that may be the, the flaw of uh, language modeling or the limitation of language modeling uh, by only receiving the text input. And how do we solve that? Uh, which is this paper wants to talk about. The one way to solve that is to add in the, the visual grounded uh, signal and do the visual grounded super supervision. But the problem is that it's not like no, no one has done this before. Actually, uh, many people attempted to do that. But the problem is we, the data set, the visual grounded uh, supervision data set uh, we have, which is a language corpus with images, uh, they are very small in size. Uh, usually the, the data size of those uh, visual grounded uh, language corpus, uh, corpus, they are like 100 times smaller than uh, other text format corpora. Okay, so another another point is uh, the grounded languages. The grounded languages uh, prefers short and uh, instructive uh, descriptions. And most of the data sets like you, like image captioning data set, it, it gives you a, a an image then uh, also attached with a very short description of the image. And that description usually uh, tend to be very short and uh, just instructive, which is quite different from uh, what we used to uh, train our models on those like general text, for example, Wikipedia or like a book corpus. So this distribution is just very different. Okay, so that's the problem. And there, another problem, third problem is that most of the words are not, are not visually grounded. Uh, what I mean by visually grounded is like, when I say Apple, Apple is very easy to, easy to associate with the image Apple, right? And, but some other words like uh, by, uh, by the way, the by, B-Y, how, how would you associate this word, like a preposition with image? So that's a challenge. And they, they did some uh, statistic, which is only, only considered a noun, uh, the noun, nouns uh, in English as a visually grounded uh, words. And they only found out, they found out that only 28% of the words in Wikipedia, English Wikipedia are visually grounded. So uh, uh, there's another problem. It's not every word, every token you can ground it with an image. So these are three main challenges that people are facing when trying to do visually grounded supervision. And this is the, what I mean by uh, the difference in size. So this is MS Core, COCO, MS Coco data set. It's a visually grounded uh, language corpus, corpus. And these two are also. And you can see the number of tokens of them. At most is 30, 30 million uh, tokens, which is actually quite, quite little. And compared to Wikipedia, 103 is just a subset of Wikipedia. It's just a uh, just one third of it. And the English, the whole English Wikipedia is uh, 3,000 mediums, which is 100 times of uh, the CC corpus, VG corpus. So that's uh, the difference. The difference in size, and in terms of number of sentences, sentences also very di very different, and also the vocabulary size uh, also very very different. It, it's like in CC corpus. 17,000, and compared to English Wikipedia, it's just almost two times of uh, uh, the voc vocabulary size of the larger corpus in the visually grounded corpus. Okay, so that's the difference. And this 
a paper proposes a solution. The solution is use the contextual token image matching to attach the images to the tokens in the English Wikipedia or some other general English text corpora. So how they do that is they they try to match, they have the mechanisms to, to match those images to the very general text, like this text input. Humans learn languages by listening, speaking, writing, reading, and they, they, they have the model, they will retrieve the images to each token. So like these humans, they retrieve this uh, image uh, which contains uh, some humans, and also learn, this is image, the model thinks this is the image for learning and language by this is like a visual and um, listening speaking all sort of things and more importantly this model actually can consider the full context of the language so it's not like by the word by will always be associated associated with this image not really depending on the context because this context is like a lot of languages related things speaking so this is why the model chose to associate the token by with the image of a person speaking oh sorry a person listening on the phone or maybe he's or she yeah so this is why the model chose uh, to associate the token by to the image of a person listening on the phone Okay, so how do they do that? How do they do this kind of tokens and image association? Uh, this process is called uh, vacanization. Uh, very interesting word. And they basically define a scoring function to decide how close this image to this given token. This is X is image to this given token in this context. The context, this S means maybe it represents sentence. Basically, it's, it's context. And this is where, and after you input the sentence and the token and the, the image, the given image, it will give you a, a, like a matching score. And if the metric score is very high, then basically we, we will select the highest uh, uh, matrix, uh, matrix picture to associate with the given token. And the pictures is just not like uh, infinite pictures. They is a finite image set, uh, which uh, from uh, MS Coco data set, it contains uh, 50,000 images. So you can see this image vocabulary. The vocabulary it only has uh, 50,000 vocabulary. And uh, this is just more formally to written this down, to, 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 to kind of uh, to write this down. And you will select the, the max value of the scoring associated scores for, of the image. Then you will associate this vacuum with this word. Uh, in the given context. So you want to have a scoring function here to calculate the relevance, uh, the relevancy of uh, the token in a given context and uh, the image. But the problem is how do you define this uh, scoring function? It's the art. So we have this scoring function written here, and we will discuss how we uh, define this and how we train this function. And this is some uh, visualization of uh, the flow. You have the uh, text, uh, corpus, and you run your tokenizer on the corpus. And after that, you have a t list of tokens. You input this list of tokens to a language encoder it's a bird based model here. Then you will have the representations for each token. Then you also run your visual encoder here. It's a ResNet here uh, in this context. And run through every single image. 
50,000 images, and you have representation for each image. And you run your scoring function, but for sure you cannot run like uh, each tokens over every images. There will be too much. So there is a nearest uh, uh, neighborhood search or max in a product search, some algorithm to make you uh, skip some computation, unnecessary computation. And then you, you find an image that is uh, the best match for a given token in the given context. So after that, you match successfully uh, to image to token, image to token, image to token. So here we want to discuss how uh, we can train train them a scoring function. So first we have uh, uh, a, a token a language encoder which is Burr Burr model here. So we have uh, a list of tokens here: uh, token number one, token number two, to token number L, and this is input to the the Burr model. After that, the Burr model will calculate rep the representation of each token. Hidden representation number one, hidden representation number two is a vector, 70, 60, 762 dimensional vector to represent a token. And after that, you uh, basically you have uh, to concatenate the four last layers of bird output, uh, which you will have uh, 760A times. Uh, times four dimension no vector here. Then you are, you put your dimensional vector here, you feed that you you feed the vector here through a uh, multi-layer perceptron. This is a learnable uh, projection layer basically. Then you will project your uh bird representation, bird output to another feature which is the true feature that represents your token in this scoring function. And this is learnable things. The bird is already pre-trained and will not be trained here. This is the thing that we want to train, the multi-layer perception here. And for the ResNet also here, you, you run a ResNet to the given image and you calculate the feature. This is just a represent the feature of that, and it's non-learnable because of the ResNet is already pre-trained here. We don't train that. And after that, you also upload uh, this to the multi-layer perception and do some normalization here. And you have the vector that truly represent your image in this context. Then after that, you do the inner product of this feature, the token feature and the image feature. And treat this as uh, your relevance score. The higher means they are more relevant. And definitely, if some people may ask, why don't we just uh, use this feature, the Burr encoding feature and the, the ResNet encoding feature, we do the inner product between them. But it will not work because you don't. if you don't have this kind of learnable uh, projection layers uh, here, then the, the model will not know which token is uh, more relevant to to what image. They have no idea what they is. So that's why you need to have this learnable uh, multi-layer perception here. Then put this, uh, define this as your relevant score. Then after that, the next is we need to do training. But how do we train that? We need to write, uh, write down our loss function here. So first of all, we, we want to, let's look at this function loss function here. We want to uh, make the positive sense examples, which is here, the token that's and the its corresponding image, uh, the relevance score of this as high as possible. And uh, this is negative example, which means the tokens and the, it's uh, the image that's not corresponding to this token in this given context. It's context dependent. Okay, so as low as possible. It's not relevant, so we don't want this relevancy score to be high. It should be as low as possible. Okay, so uh, we write this hinge loss function. So basically, is to say we want to minimize this loss function, right? So this function is to select the max value between zero and this. And let's say that it just tells us we want to minimize this value. And this just tells us we want the uh, difference between negative uh, positive examples and the negative 
example as as much as possible. And if it's the difference between them is not uh, greater than the threshold threshold M, then you will not change the score. So uh, they must be very different and better their, uh, it's better be their difference is more than M. And definitely in terms of direction, the score of uh, the positive example should be more than the negative example. So um, it's a hinge loss function. It's widely, very widely used. If you uh, don't understand it now, uh, maybe pause the video and try to think about this function, then you will get it. As for how we generate the, the positive examples, uh, image, uh, the token and image pair, and the negative uh, token and image pair, uh, it's basically very hard to get this data because th this kind of data set just doesn't exist. That's why they chose to use uh, MS Coco data set. It's basically the uh, Im image caching in data set. You have one sentence and the corresponding image. Uh, we call these sentence image pairs. So you have this. Uh, unfortunately, it's not what, uh, exactly what we want. Uh, what we want is the token and the corresponding image, but this is just give you the whole sentence and the, its corresponding image. But they just uh, use this as uh, a weekly supervised, uh, sig uh, weekly supervised learning signal, uh, which means uh, maybe you have a sentence, I am eating apple. And this sentence uh, is associated with the the Apple image, an Apple image, and what they do is that they associate every token in this sentence. I am eating. I eat. I'm eating apple with uh, the Apple image. So every token is associated with uh, Apple image. I associate with Apple. M associate with Apple, and so on. It's not perfect, but it's uh, just the the very weak weak learning signal, and it's. Uh, in, in the later of this paper, it just proves uh, it's actually working. So you, now you have this uh, a positive example, which is we we generated from the MS Coco data set. And they also randomly sample a negative example from, from this data set. So uh, for the example I gave you, I'm eating apple. They will sample uh, the image other than apples as uh, a negative example. So I'm eating apple, and they associate this sentence with maybe a computer as a negative example. And you you, you write down this those functions. This is how you train your multi-layer perception here. You have two multi-layer perceptrons, and you train them, and you will they will learn how to associate image and the uh, uh, the token. Then your function, your relevancy functions will become accurate. Then you do the inner product of these two features, these two features, two features, then you will have a relevancy score. So that's how it works. And here uh, comes the most important part of this uh, paper. So previously, we just uh, generated data, right? Then after we have, we train this relevancy score, uh, scoring function, we know how to assign the I relevance in match to tokens. We call the vaccination. Now we we know how to do vaccination, but how do we use the uh, vaccinized data, uh, the tokens and the image data to train a language model? This uh, the model we want to train. Uh, we call the visually supervised language models. Okay, so uh, there are two parts of this model. The first part is on the right. On the left side of this picture is just uh, the same as how the bird is trained. It's mask language models, basically to mask uh, some randomly mask some tokens, uh, and uh, the model need to predict these mask tokens from the rest of the context. In this example, humans learn language by listening, speaking, and uh, the world learn and uh, listening a mask. So you, the bird model need to predict that. This is the, how we write loss function. L you need to predict the learn and the listening. And the, for the, another part, we call the vacant classification task. On the right side, you want to predict every Vulcan that corresponding to uh, the token. So in this case, in the mask language model, 
you only predict your model only predict the masked tokens, but in the Vulcan classification task, you the model you want a model to predict uh, every Vulcans. So that's a difference, very significant difference, and. Uh, be aware of here, you input is only a list of tokens. You don't input any images. And images is just your uh, label. Basically, uh, you will every token will have the corresponding uh, Vulcan, which is an image. Then you want to predict that. So that's uh, what the Vulcan classification task do, is doing. And uh, yeah, so for the Vulcan classific classific classification task is here, uh, the loads function and how we can formulate this. You input a list of tokens and to the language, uh, the, the transformer model is the Burr model here. Then you have the representation of uh, uh, for each token, for each token, then you feed these hidden representations to a soft uh, a projection layers plus a softmax function, and you will give you the probability of the given context uh, and this token, token i, that's retrieving uh, the Vulcan v. Then you want to maximize the uh, the positive cases. And in this case, you only train on the positive case, which is uh, uh, your label, right? And the loss function, the whole loss function is uh, the negative log possibilities over all corresponding uh, Vulcans. So it's all Vulcans, all Vulcans, from I to L, which is all Vulcans. Then you want to uh, minimize this loss function, means you want to maximize the, 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 the log probability function of a uh, given context S and uh, the token uh, I to retrieve the corresponding Vulcan. Okay, so this is the whole loss function. You have one uh, mask language modeling loss function here. This is the the whole tokens. This is the uh, ma uh, mask tokens. So this uh, they are the whole token ma subtract the mask token means the the rest of tokens. And you got this count is your context that you want to predict uh, the mask tokens. You see here, this is only you only want to predict the mask tokens here. And for the Vulcan classification, uh, it's only you also only have the the rest of the context. There's the tokens that are not mask. And uh, you want to predict the all Vulcans here, see, all Vulcans. So this is a difference, very important differences. <laughs> um. In the end, you just sum up these two loss functions. And there's a hyperparameter here, uh, lambda. In this paper, uh, they say due to the budget issue, they do not fine tune this lambda. Lambda just uh, uh, sets equals to one here. Okay. If you think about this uh, model architecture, it's quite interesting because have you realized the model does not have any understanding of image at all? Did you see any like ResNet or CNN or any corresponding like a representation of image? No. The image here is just a bit treated as a vocabulary, as a label. So it's just an ID. It's, a Im it's actually a model doesn't know uh, what's inside the image at all. It's just treated as a, a label. And there are only 50,000 images, 50,000 labels, corresponding labels. And maybe let me uh, uh, conceptualize this a little bit. Let's say in the, the label, uh, the humans always be, a, most of the time humans be is like uh, associated with this image, which contains many humans. And the model at first maybe didn't know what, why they are associated together. But after model seen a lot of uh, training examples, he found out humans always associate with this image, and people, uh, human beings, are also frequently associate with this image. The model built out a concept. The image number one, they say this is image number one. Image number one 
has like some relevancies with humans, people, persons, they kind of things. So model gradually learn this sense. This is just another learning signal for model. And maybe another example, I am eating apple. And apple, the token apple is always, almost always uh, be associated with the fruit apple. And sometimes associated with the uh, maybe iPhone. The model gradually build out a sense, apple can mean two things. And most of the time it means uh, maybe fruit, right? depending on the context. The model will have this kind of uh, uh, realization of the world, the knowledge of the world, slowly building up during the training. But in fact, model did not really understand what's actually going on in this image. Uh, maybe you put an image with an apple and a, uh, an orange. The model will not know they actually are two uh, uh, two different kinds of fruit. But maybe uh, after learning, uh, if you're learning learning code like the example is good enough, then they will find out this image image of uh, apple and orange always, always be associated with the token apple and the token orange. And you're probably picking up some sense of this picture actually contains two kinds of fruit. Yeah, this uh, just some uh, example concretization for you. Okay, so that's a very, very interesting part of this paper. It's implication of a Vulcan classification task. It's very important to get a physical meaning. Okay, so they, this, here's the uh, experiment results. They fine tune the result of a different pre-trained model. So they use this way to pre-train a bird. They pre-train on the Wikipedia data, yeah, Wikipedia. And uh, for the six layer bird, they only, because they they, they, they say that the six layer bird here is too small to handle all English Wikipedia data. So they only train on the English Wikipedia uh, 103, which is a subset of the English Wikipedia. And this is the uh, six layer bird, six layer bird, and the 12 layer bird, 12 layer bird, plus, and some, some with or without, token, a Vulcan classification task, pre-training task. And this is Roberta. They also use trainer Roberta to do the, uh, with or without a Vulcan classification task. And you can see the the model with, let's just see these two columns, uh, these two rows, uh, bird-based model with and with, with and without Vulcan classification task. And on average, on average, the Vulcan, the, the bird that's trained with Vulcan classification pre-training, outperform the the bird model training without Vulcan classification by a significant margin. Uh, that's a lot of uh, percentage. It's almost almost three percent, two point seven percent average. That's huge. That's definitely huge. This is average. So it's average over so many different tasks. So it's very significant. And uh, let's just pick one, uh, maybe a sentiment classification. It's almost 3% higher than the bird model train without that. And for the Roberta also, the Roberta, Roberta model here, also on average, the, the 12 layer of Roberta train on the Vulcan classification tasks. It's exactly 3% over the robot the train without Vulcan classification task. That's very, very cool. Means the uh, virtually grounded uh, learning signal, it's super helpful, extremely helpful. That's 3%, 3% in this, uh, in modern deep learning uh, NLP, it's huge, it's huge. And uh, uh, something they, uh, I want to let you know is this bird, the bird model, they train on the Wikipedia. Uh, maybe you compare to the original bird paper, the performance is lower because they only train on the Wikipedia. Uh, they didn't train on the Toronto Books Corpus because the Books Corpus is not available. It's not public, publicly available. So the performance compared to the original bird paper would be slightly, slightly lower. They're just a, a caveat. And uh, also another caveat, the bird model and the robot, uh, they use a slightly different 
uh, tokenization methods. So they introduced the a method called revolkanization to solve this problem. Because if you tokenize the your tokens in a different way, then how do you map the image in the same way? There, there will be some trouble. So they introduced a revolkanization uh, technique. If you're interested in, check out the paper. Um, I'm going to skip that there, here. OK, so um, here is uh, another experiment. Uh, basically, they want to know how different the uh, uh, visually grounded corpus, MS Coco, uh, from the general text, Wikipedia 103. They, because the number of tokens in MS Coco uh, is different from Wikipedia 103, so they, they kind of reduce the number of tokens in Wikipedia 103 to the same, uh, to make it the same amount of tokens as uh, MS Coco data set. And they train, they use uh, mask language modeling as a pre-training task and to train the bird model uh, means they did not perform a Vulcan classification task. And the reason they want to do this is just look, they want to train uh, two different bird models on a very sim similar size of data, but with different uh, uh, different like uh, distributions. In the um, MS Coco data is more uh, like they say, it's shorter and it's more uh, simple description. And the Wikipedia data is just a general text. And you see on those uh, uh, four different tasks, the Wikipedia data just uh, constantly outperform the Coco, MS Coco data, uh, data set a lot, uh, the model that trained on Wikipedia data. In the sentiment classification, maybe not that significant, but in the natural language inference, it's 17% uh, higher. That's uh, incredibly high, and the uh, ENLI uh, task is also significantly higher. And uh, there's uh, also another baseline: that's training from scratch without training from uh, uh, without doing an, any pre-training at all, just training from the task data. And you can see the task data. If you feel training only from task data, it definitely not comparable. Means the uh, MS Coco still have some like. Uh, uh, usefulness, but the it's definitely the informativeness uh, is not comparable. It's not anywhere comparable to Wikipedia general text at all. So it just let you know like how different the visually grounded corpus uh, from are from the uh, general corpus. Another experiment they want to uh, do some ablation test. To see uh, how the like image retrieval, how the different mechanism of image retrieval will affect the model performance and also supervision methods. So remember previously they have the to token image matching uh, model, right? And that's a contextual token label. Basically, it depends on your context will us to assign the corresponding image to you. Uh, for example, I have an Apple iPhone. Then they will assign the Apple company logo to this Apple. I'm eating Apple. Then they will assign the fruit Apple to this Apple. Depending on the context, the, that's their retrieval because they use bird model. And some other things that combine we mentioned. So that's a contextual level uh, token retrieval. So they, they experiment that with uh, several different ways Another is token level retrieval, which is like also assign the image to each token, but without getting the context. So most likely they will also assign, they will always assign a fruit apple image to token apple, because uh, that's mostly apple is used, depending on the con not, not depending on the context, just uh, statistically speaking. And another retrieval method is just to assign the, an image to all tokens in the same sentence. So it's a, a, a more rough way to do things. And in terms of uh, supervision method, is the Vulcan classification task uh, in this paper is used uh, every to You basically need to predict the corresponding Vulcan of a token, right? And you also can 
just predict the one image for the corresponding sentence. So this is another way to do the supervision. And they do an experiment, and some they find out the best method is still the contextual, uh, contextual token level retrieval with token level supervision. It's significantly uh, better than the other combination of methods. So uh, very informative ablation study. Yeah, kind of we can learn a lot from this. And we probably can gain the better intuition of how these things uh, works. Okay, this, here's some example of their uh, Vulcans. So the center is done, done by the Sally Garden, my love and I did meet. Okay, so they, the model assigned the it's contextual uh, matching model. So the model assigned this uh, image, looks like people go going down and this image this image model feels this is image represents the token by and like really 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 depending on the context right the, in the previous example they assign the a person listening on the phone as the token by but this they assigning the people they sitting on the bench so very different even the the, the model assign uh very, I don't know what it means, this image, but quite interesting. Okay, so this is corresponding image, and uh, yeah, just to uh, give you some context. Okay, so we have reached the end of today's video. Here is the summary. The summary, this paper, basically is contributions of this paper. They propose the vulcanization method that allows, uh, allows people to uh, assign the corresponding images to the large uh, to lar to large language corpora so you can build up a very large uh, visually grounded language data uh, so basically it's just we can get as much as uh, we have in the pure text data because they just assign the images to existing pure text corpora super useful and more importantly uh, they propose more the methods uh, that you can train the visually supervised language model without changing the bird model architecture at all you just need to add another prediction layer so it's like uh, the uh, multi-task learning right you learn one thing is mask language modeling and another is a uh, uh, Vulcan prediction in the, in the inference time you can just uh, ignore the prediction layer. You can basically remove the, the Vulcan prediction layer and then you have exactly the same model as the Burr model, the traditional Burr model. So that's a very like uh, usable method because some, some, some people propose the, the model architecture is super complex and uh, very hard to use in the real life. But this model, it's just they didn't change the Burr model architecture at all. You just put on prediction layer on top of it. So I believe this uh, will be widely adopted in NLP, this method. And lastly, they, they show this model, if you train your Burr model on mask language modeling and uh, uh, token prediction, Vulcan, Vulcan prediction task, your model can have a significant gain compared to the model that only train the mask language model, modeling task. So that's uh, uh, super, super eye-opening for me. And hope you enjoy this video as well. If you enjoy the video, give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more relevant deep learning videos like this. And other than that, take care. Until next time.